Today, we're going to be looking at how you explain what you've learned from an experiment. The method of doing this is what's known as CER. The C stands for claim. The E stands for evidence. And the R stands for reasoning. And this is a method which will help you explain how you know something and why you know something, especially when we're talking about a scientific experiment. So this is how you're going to be writing your conclusions for many of your experiments. So let's go through these parts. The first thing you're going to be writing is a claim. A claim is a statement that answers your original question. Well, what's your original question? If we're talking about a scientific experiment, and the experiment was designed to determine the identity of the metal, then the claim is, what's the metal? This metal is iron. This metal is silver. That's your claim. The claim has to be accurate, specific, and again, it has to answer the question. If we were to ask you, what is the concentration of acid in vinegar? You can't just say, there's a lot of acid in vinegar. There's little acid in vinegar. You need to be specific. The vinegar contains 5% acid. Now, the claim is usually one sentence in length. And again, it's directly related to the purpose of the experiment. So this shouldn't be too hard to figure out. Answer the original question. The second part is the evidence. And the evidence is why you think the claim is true. What proof do you have that the claim is true? What scientific data supports your claim? Now, in a lot of cases, you could have different sources, textbooks, reading selections, videos, class notes. But what we're mostly focusing on in these courses is the classroom investigation. What data did you obtain? Did you see a particular color change? Did you measure, measure a particular volume? Did you measure a particular pH? What evidence do you have that supports what you're claiming? So this comes right from the data section of your labs. Now, your data should include both qualitative and quantitative data. If you have it, qualitative data is uh, things like color, quantitative data is numbers. You should include as much data as you have that proves your claim, not just one piece of data, unless the experiment only gives you one piece of data. And some might actually do that. But then comes the reasoning. The reasoning is, why does your data prove your claim? It connects your claim to your evidence. It connects what you say is true to what the data shows. Why do you think that metal is iron? Why do you think the concentration of acid in vinegar is 5%? What, what proof do you have? So the reasoning is going to be the why part. Now, when you start talking about your reasoning, this is where the scientific principles come in. And I'll explain, I'll show you an example in just a minute of how this works. So it's going to show detailed understanding of the scientific principles involved and uses the proper vocabulary. We're going to be talking about a concentration known as molarity. So we'll be putting the words molarity in some of your conclusions. We'll be talking about malleability or density. Again, using all the proper terms is going to be important and explaining the scientific principles which prove you correct. So let's take a look at a quick and easy experiment and then we'll use what we've learned from this experiment to show you how the CER method can be used to write a conclusion. What I've got is a tall skinny glass and I'm going to add some water to the tall skinny glass. About that much. There's the water. Then, to the water, I'm very going to slowly add some vegetable oil. I'm supposed to do this slowly. There we go. We got some vegetable oil. You guys can see something's happening already there. And to the vegetable oil, we are going to be adding some pancake syrup. I'm going to slowly dribble the pancake syrup in there. Okay. 
Let's sit for a second. And there is our experiment. So now let's talk about our results. The question we want to answer as a result of our experiment is how does the density of the water compare to the density of the oil and the corn syrup? That's our question. That's what our experiment is trying to prove. So first, we have our claim, our one-sentence claim. Based on what I see here, I would say that the water is more dense than the oil, but it's less dense than the syrup. That answers the original part of the experiment. Now, how do I know this is true? Well, let's look at my evidence. And typically, your evidence, you would be writing down what you saw here, that the oil's here, the water's here, and the, the syrup is here. But the evidence is, when we mix the three liquids, the water is above the syrup, but the oil is above the water. Or, the water is underneath the oil. That's our evidence. Now, what does this really mean? To someone who doesn't know much about density, this evidence makes no sense. How does this prove that the water is more dense than the oil, but less dense than the syrup? And this is why you have to have reasoning to show that you understand that this evidence proves this to be true. And typically your reasoning could be a little bit longer than the claim or the evidence, but it shows what you really know. The reasoning, here's my scientific principle. When mixing liquids, the most dense liquid will sink to the bottom and the least dense liquid will be on top. Okay, that's our scientific principle. Now, how do we connect the scientific principle to our evidence, to our claim? Since water is above the syrup, water is less dense. You see, that's what this part up here tells us. And since oil is above the water, the oil is less dense. So this explanation here includes the scientific principle about what happens when you mix liquids in terms of density to explain how this evidence results in this claim. So let's go through this checklist one more time when we're talking about our explanation of our experiments, our CER checklist. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to write a complete sentence for your claim. Does the claim answer the question? Go back to the beginning of the lab and find out why are we doing the lab? What are we trying to show? What are we trying to figure out? The claim should only answer the question. Okay. Is the claim more than a yes or no answer? Well, there might be one to a few times where we're trying to see um, is this substance better than this substance? So sometimes you might have a yes or no answer. Probably not going to happen. But make sure your claim is a complete sentence. And then as you're writing your conclusion paragraph, let's talk about the evidence. Are you including evidence that supports your claim? Are you just making sure that you're sticking to the evidence that points to what you believe to be true? Sometimes there's going to be evidence that... Um, might be for another part of the experiment or some evidence that doesn't actually show anything. Is there enough evidence? If you've got five different tests, but you only talk about one, well, maybe you should include more evidence. Okay? The evidence should lack an explanation or reasoning. Okay? You don't have to explain why. It should simply be an observation. It should simply be the stuff that you notice, the data from your lab. Okay? And finally, the reasoning. Is there a justification how each piece of evidence supports the claim? Why did you include that evidence? How does that show that your claim is correct? Okay? The reasoning should not simply repeat the evidence. You shouldn't say that um, the oil is less dense than the water because the oil is on top of the water. Okay? That's part of your, your evidence. Explain why. The reason being, of course, is that because less dense things are above more dense things, that's how we know that the oil is less dense than the water. Is the scientific principle explained? And you saw in my example how we went through and we talked about the density. And the less dense objects, less dense liquids, float on top of more dense liquids. Is the reasoning written in complete sentences? Yes, you have to do complete sentences when you're writing a conclusion. So, 
If the experiment has only one claim, you're trying to find out the identity of a metal, or you're trying to find out the concentration of a solution, or how much acid is in a particular solution. This is your paragraph right here. A sentence here, a bunch of sentences listing the evidence, and then a final explanation of what we saw. So that is a brief explanation into how to use the claim evidence reasoning method when writing conclusion to a scientific experiment. We have a worksheet with a few examples and some answers on it, but try to refer back to this video and these worksheets when you're writing conclusions to all of your labs. By the way, this method is also used when you're writing things in English or social studies or just about any other time you're writing to prove something. It's the same method. It might have a few different titles, but it's the same method you're going to be using when you're writing argumentative essays or literary critiques. So, good luck. Please contact me if you have any more questions.